Good evening. And thank you very much for joining me. It's really good to see you and good to have you. Um, if you can do me a favor, please, if you can mute your mics um, and keep them muted for me unless you have a question. And then um, if you do, we're going to, you're just going to open your mic and speak. It's very informal. Um, you, you can speak at any time. You can stop me throughout. Um, that is fine as well. Uh, but tonight we have a 15 minutes presentation and then we go straight into um, questions, um, general business talks or whatever you wanna ask or whatever you wanna share, that would be perfect. Um, so would appreciate that. Thank you very much um, for sharing your thoughts with me as we deal with this time. So if we can please, and Alex, if you can keep the mics muted for me, I'd, I'd be very grateful as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you for those who are in Zoom. Um, sorry for my Facebook audience, we, uh, you can't see my screen, but um, I'm going to translate what's um, on, on the screens for you. So let me know if you can see my screen, Zoom, I hope you can. And uh, Alex, just to confirm, can you see my screen um, in Zoom? I can see your screen. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Good. So we're, tonight we're dealing with revolutionizing our corporate brand to survive during and after COVID-19. Again, thank you very much for being with me. Um, know that a logo is not a brand is not only your brand. It's part of, but it's not uh, the only thing that defines your brand. Um, I just wanna thank all of our essential workers from the grocery clerks to the physicians and janitress, etc. Thank you very much for doing what you're doing. We really appreciate it. Uh, a few days ago, I left the house for the first time in a month and um, got to see firsthand the grocery store clerks at work. Um, so we really appreciate you. Please keep up the great work and thank you all for joining as well. Again, our model for this time and just the general time is rather than panicking, we will plan. So don't panic, let us plan. Let us use our focused minds to understand what is going on during this time. This is new territory for all of us. So let us take the time to understand what is going on to our world, what is going on in the realm of business, and let us cease those opportunities that may arise during this time. And there's certainly opportunities, so don't be, uh, tricked into thinking that it's only gloom and doom. There's so many opportunities and even if you can't see or recognize the opportunities right now, um, you can rest assured that those opportunities will pop up from time to time or even as soon as we get out of this. Uh, now, my previous videos are very essential because there's some rationale to my madness. Um, you, you would have seen from the first one where we spoke about uh, budgeting and where we stood prior to the pandemic and then we went on to what our budget looked like after the pandemic, how the pandemic hit our top line as well as our bottom line, how was income affected, how your expenses were affected and where you stand net net uh, as we speak. So please uh, pay close attention to um, your, your finances. This is a very serious time. If you don't plan accordingly, you are bound to make the wrong move. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to panic. We want to plan. So now, whether you have a business or you have, or it's just your brand, 
because each of us should look at ourselves as an incorporated entity, as a company. So each of us carries our own brand. So whether you have a business or you're just um, someone, an ordinary person like me, um, where, you, where, where you just need to keep your brand solid at all times, this is good for you. So don't say that, you know, I don't have a business, so I may need to tune out. You need to listen to this. This is, this is extremely good. This is one of my better ones. <laughs> all right. Um, now, again, if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to su subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're going to continue this even after. As, as Caribbean people, as even as people of the world, wherever you sit, we need to find a common ground and to bond together to help each other. So I may know finances and you know how to make uh, a particular product or some other trade. I, I would love for you to share your thoughts with me so that I can expand my horizon, not to compete with you, but to enhance what I am doing and to make what I'm doing better. So I encourage you to share your thoughts as well. So we each help each other and not look at it as the black crab syndrome where, oh, who she thinks she is or who we think he is um, sharing this. We know this already. So let's change our mindsets. Now, as I usually do, even with branding, there's mind regulation. And I want you to um, please try to regulate your mind with me. Now, gone are the days when we did not need our businesses to stand out. You know, back in the day, um, we just needed to drop a couple things um, and it was called business. Not anymore. One, because competition has tremendously increased. And two, we see that this is a very uh, interesting world. Uh, we see that the world has changed tremendously. The world is changing even as we sit here tonight. So gone are the days when we can just do any old thing and call it business. We need to be on point and we need to keep our game up at all times. Two mangoes in an old saucepan on the side of the road will no longer cut it and it will not, even if back then it did not add tremendous wealth to us, and it will not add now. So yeah, you can sell your mangoes on the side of the road in a saucepan, mangoes, two for five dollars, whatever it is, but that is not, while it's an honorable uh, hustle, it is not going to make us wealthy and into the realm that each of us um, is looking forward to go. So I encourage you to think bigger, think um, of taking that saucepan business to being a multinational corporation where you have pickled mangoes and, and you have mangoes with labels on them, um, whether it be uh, Stacy's mangoes or Lips Group mangoes. Um, so you want to take your mango business to another level. We should all love our creative designers, all love graphic artists, etc. However, a graphic artist creating your logo is your brand is much, much more than only a logo. So while these creatives are geniuses in their own rights, after you would have gone through your brand realignment and your revolutionizing of your brand in terms of where you want to see your brand, then you let you tell the creative, this is what I would like for you to produce for me. But don't send the creative out without understanding where you're trying to take your brand and let them come back and give you something that's not going to work. And then you say, oh, okay, come give me a piece of, put a pineapple up there and stick a some bananas on the side, that is not gonna cut it. Um, we need to go through proper branding. Even as an individual, what do you stand for um, with your personal brand? We have to be careful, even as teenagers, um, you see teenagers um, post a lot of things on social media and they live to regret it because um, 
potential recruiters look at their social media pages and see they were saying Q R P S D L U V whatever language or letters or words we have to be very careful with our social media obviously if your brand is something in that regard then you may be onto something but make sure that that is your brand and not it's not just because so let us be very careful with our personal brand as well now where are you looking to take your business if you say Felicia I am going to I want my saucepan mango business to, to remain I want to sell my five mangoes on the side of the road um, because I only need to make this amount then you know this may not be the session for you and and um, I'll buy your mangoes, but I certainly can assist you to take you to that wealthy place and, and the place that I know you can achieve and we all can achieve um, regardless of uh, our education level, our social status, color of our skin, religion, whatever it is. We can achieve so much um, just because we have associated with the right people and form our network. So where do you, but you have to answer this question tonight. Where do I want to take my business? Where do I want to take my personal brand? What do I want to achieve? And if you're honest right now, so on a scale of one to 10, you know, I like my scales one to 10. If you have one business, two businesses, three, whatever, how many ever businesses you have, or if you don't have any business and you're looking to start a business, can you rate, if you're looking to start a business, then do it on the, the plans that you have in your mind or the plans that you would have created based on our last video, um, or, or I think two videos up, um, what you intend or where do you stand with your brand? Um, based on your vision. If you have a business right now, I want you to rank it. Where do you stand with your brand? And if you don't have a business, you don't have an idea that you're working on, then your personal brand, you should do this regardless, anyhow. Where do you stand personally with your brand on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is your, your, your brand is the bomb.com? According to my nephews and nieces, I learned some things. Um, your brand is top notch. It is the thing out there. I am a 16, a, a 10, sorry, I'm a 10 um, because my brand is on point. Be honest with yourself. As an individual, where does your brand stand? Do you have a brand as, as an individual? what do you stand for where do you is it closer to one and if it's closer to one that's okay too because we're building tonight we're revolutionizing our brand so if you're closer to one let let me help you build on that so we can quickly get up to an eight nine ten now this is a three pager we're not we're remember we created the five page business plan we then went into um where we do the whole rebrand, re, regrouping of our business, recalibrating of our business. Um, what I want you to do is get out your iPad, your, your tablet, pen and paper, whatever it is, and we're gonna do a three-pager tonight. So walk with me. We're going to take a stock of where our brands stand. Where does your brand stand right now? How would you rate your business? Again, you already did the overall rating. Now we're going to hit different uh, aspects and they're called touch points. Um, a touch point in branding is what the outside world sees your brand as. Um, how does the world react to your, brand, your touch points? And these are the things that they can see. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate yourself, your, yourself as a personal brand, your business as a, person, as, as a brand, um, how would you rate it? And the first touch point is your logo. 
Now, does your logo say who you are, who your business is? If I look at your logo, um, can I, can I, even some logos are just abstract. So in those cases, uh, I, I, I like abstract. That's good in certain cases. But I believe that at least your slogan should bring out what that mark represents. And sometimes you have a standalone logo. You have the words and the emblem, the, the logo, um, coupled with a slogan. For me, I like simple, I like clean, I don't like busy. So your mark, um, your emblem, whatever your logo is, um, is, it, is it an actual picture or drawing, or is it just a name um, formed in, 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 in designer um, ink? Uh, or is it a combination? If you were to, to rate this, how would you rate your logo? Then, a lot of people, you know, branding, you can go and you can read thousands and thousands of pages on branding. Um, but this is what has worked for me. This is what I tell my clients. This is, these are the quick points that, based on all of my reading, I have put together just for you. Now, customer service, the... Uh, most people don't think of customer service as part of your brand, but customer service is an essential part of your brand. I am sure each of us can think about um, persons who have, or businesses we've, we've, we've encountered, bad customer service, ridiculous customer service, and that is etched in memory we will remember that as long as we live that cashier was so rude that the customer i called for a return and they weren't helpful so how is your business customer service can you rate that on a scale of one to ten now and i've been saying this throughout we as the consumer we need to keep our eyes out for those businesses during this time who are purposely making excuses to treat their, their employees badly. We need to just, just take a mental note of that and, and, and check it. Um, obviously, everybody has to, make, especially the financial um, advisors, their financial advisors need to advise them accordingly based on their books and their budget. But Again, this is a time where people need to eat. People need to feed their kids. So we just need to be conscious of the treatment of employees. And if you were to rate your business, your brand, the treatment of employees, the training of your employees, how would you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? Especially for those who are in the product uh, industry. So if, you, if you're providing a product, how is your packaging? Is it just slapped together in a, in a plastic bag? Or is it um, really tailored to your market? Then advertising. Another big part, another big touch point is advertising. How are you advertising first and foremost on a scale of one to 10? How good is your advertisement? Is it appealing to your target market? Then stationary. Again, your letterhead, envelopes, um, your, your flyers, whatever, all those things. Are you, do you have a butterfly on the, on the, on the uh, letterhead and a dragon on your business card? Or is it um, aligned throughout? So think about your stationery. How aligned are you on a scale of one to 10? Then really the quality of your products and services. It is, it is interesting that, um, you know, I saw this, this um, ma'am some days ago where it said, uh, you know, the, the longest lasting Chinese product is COVID-19. 
right? That is pretty, um, that's not, that's not cool. That's discriminatory, but it was funny because that tells the, the brand association when we think about, um, a country's products. Now, when someone or, um, or a consumer thinks about your product or your service, what are they saying on a scale of one to 10, how good it is? So that's your first page. You're taking stock. Where do you stand? Now on your page two, this is called uh, the vision culture image alignment. Vision, culture, image alignment. And that is a lot, uh, simply meaning the vision of the organization. And before you even, if you're re revolutionizing your brand, I would encourage you to go through page two by looking at what is your vision? for the business. Uh, we dealt with this a few uh, videos back where what is your vision statement, the broad statement for your business. So again, uh, if you're looking to produce, mass produce uh, pickled mangoes from your, um, so you're increasing the saucepan on the side of the road to pickle mangoes, exporting of pickled mangoes, how is, what is your vision? My vision is X, Y, Z, go through that. Again, what is your mission? How do you accomplish your vision? And that's, that your brand needs to align with your vision. It needs to align with your mission. Um, what is the culture? Now, in order to figure out what you as the manager, you as the owner needs to, um, you need to, you need to, advise or write down what is the culture you want for your organization uh what do you want your employees to 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 follow what is the culture is it a family oriented culture is it a um a dictatorship culture what is the culture that you're trying to achieve and so i would encourage you to to set down your vision set down the culture that you want in your organization and then the image your image is what the customer sees the image the stakeholders all those people outside what is the impression they have of you so again create in your page two create two columns one column um, what is it now? So based on your business, based on your personal brand, what is your uh, vision now? And what do you want it to be in the second column? And use descriptive words for this exercise. All right? Now, um, vision. Again, we went through this. What is, what is your motto? What is your vision? The culture. What do your employees believe? What do they think of the organization? And the image, how stakeholders, your customers, your creditors, your competitors, how they perceive the business. How do you assist the community? Um, think about that touchy-feely side of things. What are you doing to impact your community? How are you um, combating Whatever it is that you choose to champion, whether it's global warming or um, littering or whatever the case is, uh, literacy in the, in the um, community. How do you combat things? How do you help? How, how civic-minded are you? Now, and on page three, again, I want you to realign. We spoke about where you were, so what your vision was, what your vision now is, and what you need it to be. Because at this time, COVID-19, your vision may have changed based on where we are. You may have uh, touched into um, virtual realm. So how has your vision changed? How has your mission changed? What culture are you looking to implement in your organization? And how are you, um, how do you want to be viewed by your stakeholders, by the external people? And now we're going to realign. So from pages one and two, 
how can you strategically position your corporate brand to avoid VCI misalignment? Because you may want, you may have your vision, you may have the culture you want, you may have the image that you want, but there is a misalignment because you, that's in your head, but what exactly, how does the market see you? How does the market see um, your business? So you don't want a misalignment, you want an alignment. And again, um, you think about the VCI, the vision, culture, image for each of these, your logo. So think about the colors that you want, the words, pictorial, both color, both words and um, picture. If you want, that's what you want. Think about it and think about it as it relates to your employees and your stakeholders so that at the end of the day, you would have... Um, dealt with everything in that regard. I see a, a line drawn down. Um, question. So there's a question. Uh, you can open your mic. Um, but uh, and, and feel free to stop me. But the customer service side of things, um, how your customer uh, oriented, how customer oriented are you? We need, again, businesses need to stop thinking that they are the high higher ups and they they deserve to be there they don't deserve you make businesses you can break a business so they need to show you some more respect as the consumer now treatment and training of employees um, in rough times like these COVID-19 who are the businesses that you can say they have been good to their employees they have been good to their people watch out for that because at the end of the day, I like to say that in order for, for example, let's use the Bahamas as an example, in order for us to rebound quickly, we need to, th we need to start thinking about supporting local businesses rather than going away to import. We have to think about if we're going to support um, this, this dress store or shoe store, um, or whatever it, or IT firm or whatever rather than going out because we need as much as possible to keep that um, revenues inside so that we can we don't run into all that um, fiscal and monetary uh, situation or issues and then uh, we want to think about packaging again think you may need to if your packaging looks ranchy then you may need to you may need to revisit that and don't neglect advertising you need to make sure that you advertise and advertise well uh, as much as possible please and where you want to advertise based on your target market uh, you need to think about that your business cards everything needs to be on the same accord in the same vein um, not blue and green and pink and purple unless you are a Junkanoo firm or a carnival firm um, and stationery now think about your letterhead the quality of your service uh, think about all of those so that's where you need to seriously take some time to go into each of these areas and uh, strategically place what you want for your vision and your culture also the image and then strategically take advertisement to help you to get to that alignment of the VCI and not misalignment of the VCI now um, I'm gonna open this up Again, we can speak about branding. We can speak about anything finances. Uh, don't ask me anything medical. I am, you know, as good as my cat out there. Um, but uh, you, let's, let's speak business. We're going to open it up. I want to hear from you. And even the persons on Facebook, please type your messages. And I'm sure someone who is in Zoom would be able to, to say your, your, your question as well or just your comment. I want to hear from you. Does this make sense? Um, does this branding thing make sense to you? What would you add to it? Let's talk. So who's going to shoot first? Don't we all go at once? <laughs> 
I see, I guess I'll be the first. Way to go, Angelo. Yeah, so I think this is a very, I just want to say it's a very uh, important and relevant topic right now. Redefining what is branding. I think traditionally, like you said, we've thought of branding in terms of a logo. So we go and get a nice logo, stamp it on everything. But branding is so much more than that. Branding is the entire experience. So not just when someone sees your logo, they think about your company. That's just the first step. But the second step is what are their thoughts towards your company? Yes. And that's very important. I, and especially in competitive markets where there's so many other options, you have to be able to offer more than just an attractive logo. You have to offer me the full experience, the full package. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Angelo. Hello, Tara, here. Oh, hi, Kai. Hi. <laughs> so my question is in reference to personal branding because you did mention that even if you don't have like outright business, you would also have to consider your personal branding. But how do you separate your personal brand from your personal? Or from your, let's say I want to use my personal brand as a business, but I want to also keep my myself and myself and you understand how do you separate the two very good question a very extremely good question and sometimes they would uh cross all right cross pollinate um because you know you if especially if you have tyondas incorporated tyondas incorporated and tyonda is a public speaker um so at, but she needs to, what is her personal brand? So her business brand is public speaking and her personal brand is just Tayonda. However, if Tayonda is speaking to children uh, on self-worth and becoming all that they can be, but on Tayonda's personal profiles, her social media, her lifestyle that is uh, that that the world sees wherever it is tayonda is 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 holding up an ak whatever it is and tayonda is dropping it like it's hot and and, she, and, and you know I, i'm saying and she wants teenagers to respect their bodies and respect themselves um i i think that's a misalignment right um because Tayonda is the person who is into public speaking. Um, and she doesn't have a, even though it, it she's the main preparator for her firm, um, she isn't a, a, a silent shareholder. Um, she needs to think about how do I make sure that I speak with the same voice even though I am the separate legal entity of Tayonda Incorporated. Um, which is separate from me. So even if someone sues the entity, it can't um, come to me unless the veil is pierced. Um, and the person Tayonda. So there has to be some sort of cross-pollination um, if Tayonda wants her brand. So you have to think about what is your brand. If you are a carnival firm, it's Tayonda's um, masquerade, whatever, and Tayonda is, and you want to show me how to um, whatever the latest dance is, then that might be okay to post because it goes with your brand. So it's, it's, it's all about what is your brand, what is your culture, and how do you as the person still walk in close alignment with your business brand? I hope that answered your question. Hopefully, yes, it did. So, on that note, then, if you, if I don't, if you don't mind, go ahead. Um, I want to do a follow-up question. Yes, yes. Okay, so in that event, you know, usually we are in the social media um, age, yes. and most business pages do have, um, you know, you have your Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever account. In that case, do I do separate accounts then, one for Tyrande the brand? and the, the business brand and one for a personal personal page. How yes, yes. I am my brand. Absolutely. Yes. 
a separation of the two? I, it, again, you can have, there's nothing wrong with keeping one if you can, if you only have time to manage um, one profile per social media, then you, you may want to keep it business, all right? And, and stay away from personal. Um, however, so in that, if you have the time and you have the, and, and you want to post personal things, then I would recommend that you have two different pages, tie under the brand for her public speaking and tie under the individual because sometimes we showcase our personal and, and it's all, all up to you as, as you know, we still need to be conscious as to what we post in social media in terms of um in terms of personal pages as well so sometimes we share we share but it should always be conscious thought so for example um someone may say oh she's sharing a whole lot of things about her life i want you to see what i want you to see i've designed that so you see what you want to see but that may not i may not show you things that i don't want you to see but it's not that i'm trying to uh to to show to paint a different picture or not to be real with you I just am protecting my brand because I know what I want to show out there so to your your question I would recommend that you have your business page where you keep it strictly business and um, you also have your personal page which you can intertwine between personal and business thank you very much you're welcome Let's go, guys. Who's next? Who's next? Tell me something. I want to hear about your experiences. Does this make sense, Donovan? Let me see. Let me let me call you out, like the the um, teachers in the class. And while Donovan is getting his thoughts together, um, what do you think, Ms. Green? Um, does this make sense? Um, how do you see yourself applying this? And I would love to hear from Alexandria Major, as well as Camille, if you can add some stuff. Uh, we have Janine, tell us some. Janine is a great, great business analyst. Uh, tell us more, um, Janine. Tell us about your brand, Jamar. Tell us some more. And then I see my tie. Uh, that's, I guess, Tayonda. <laughs> and um, Mandy, please tell us more. I'm, I'm sure you're taking Guyana by storm. And I see Moto. I don't know who Moto is. And Naval, tell me some more. I know you're an accounting major. Tell me some more. And there's a Samsung SM. BJ, y'all talk to me. Hey, B. Hi. 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 So, I wanted to ask a question regarding um, uh, the BCI that you mentioned. Yes. Uh, strong, very um, strong points. And um, I wanted to know for um, your staff, how what do you do in order to motivate your staff to um, be in total alignment with your PCI um, uh, tip? Sure. What, what would you advise, um, you know, to help your staff sure. get aligned to that concept? Excellent. That's, that's, that's a great question, um, Stacey. Um, first and foremost, not everyone who is on your team is on your team. Um, and I think we have to be very uh, open and honest about that. Um, so we have to analyze, and this is a good time to really analyze our staff component. 
um, we don't need everybody to be touchy feely with us and, and all goo goo gaga. That's not the, unless you have a family oriented culture. And even in those cases, um, that is not necessary. People are there to do their work and, and, and do their work. You know, it would be nice to have some civility and all of that, but it is not absolutely necessary. So use this time to look at your staff component. Once you would have determined that, and this is um, not from a feelings perspective, but from an analysis of the staff that you have, these are the areas that I need covered, and this is the job description for the various areas. And these are the persons who we have right now to suit these job descriptions. Now, do I need to reshuffle staff because someone may not be motivated in this area, but that does not mean that they're not motivated altogether. Um, so first of all, you have to take stock of your employees. And then when it comes to motivation, I think um, just as, you know, you, well, children, family members, people know when you're BSing. People know when you're not genuine. And as an employee, you want to feel as though your employer cares. You want to feel as though you're not just a workhorse. They genuinely care about your well-being and they genuinely care about your advancement in life and also your advancement as an entrepreneur and not thinking about you being locked into their business for the rest of their lives. Um, so to answer your question, it is honesty, first and foremost, genuine uh, ness, just, just being totally 100 with your employees. Listen, I need you guys to focus. I need you guys to, this is the vision. This is our culture that we are trying to represent. We are a family oriented culture. You do not go starving at home without letting me know that I am in need. It is family oriented. Um, I care about you. I care about your well-being. I care about whether you're going through a bad divorce. I don't want to get into your business, but I am here for you. That just genuineness is what does wonders. If you as an employer can be genuine with your people, when times like COVID come up, you can simply say, I am going to cut the, I am not paying that light bill. I'm going to pay at least 40% of the overall salary so that they can buy food in their houses until the stimulus check arrives, until the NIB, NIS check arrives. I'm not going to cut them just like that even though I'm looking at my bottom line. Again, because if you're, if, if you're just looking at your bottom line, that means that you don't necessarily uh, think about the human aspect and dealing with numbers every day. I can tell you, sometimes when you see the numbers, you just want to get into chop mode because you're thinking about how do I align my numbers? But you have to remind yourself that it's not only about numbers. We're dealing with human beings every day around us so it's being genuine and being 100 with your employees whether they have a primary school education um university education or no education at all we've all i am sure we can all say that in our families we have a different um social background so the same with our staff the same with our employees they're from different areas they're from different backgrounds and we should treat everybody as human smart human beings who are able to comprehend what we say and how we can help them and if you do that employee engagement increases mind you i started out by saying you need to look at your uh your your staff component because not everyone on your team regardless of how touchy feely you are not everybody on your team is for you so you have to know when to cut start cutting trimming if if those companies who are letting people go right now is because they are um they're not the right fit i wouldn't recommend that they cut them at least give them 40 percent until you can it's a better time when you can um when you can separate ways but 
it is essential that if you have the right people on your team, you do what it takes to protect them, to protect them as your employees, protect them as your family. All right, so I hope I answered your question, Stacey. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any more questions or comments, please? I would love to hear your experience. I see Dyson. Hi, Dyson. Hey, what's going on? Right here. I heard, I I heard you're in the trouble today because you didn't come home on time. You get, I told Kent, I said, Kent, Dyson going to get in a whole lot of trouble. Because if that was you, Kent, <laughs> if that was you, Kent. <laughs> well, you know, only so much one person can do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm hoping that that's rescheduled. She's she's gonna she's gonna um, join this question right now. Excellent. Actually. Oh, she's Absolutely. in the same room with you. That's a good thing. Good job. Oh my goodness. Good job. Right there. I was tuned in on um, on Facebook, mm -hmm. and um, you were mentioning uh, advertising, and you 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 said that a couple of times. And I wanted you to really expand on that a bit and probably even offer some suggestions as to the best ways to go about advertising, especially with everything um, changing, like the face of, of promotion and, and marketing pretty much, and, and actually product packaging changing, you know, with all of the uh, this uh, COVID craze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to just uh, really expand on, on what you feel uh, businesses and brands should try to invest their time and even their money into us uh, to get the best reach okay. uh, for their advertising dollar. Mm -hmm. Excellent question, uh, Dyson. And I would lead you back to, again, your VCI. Um, you should not start advertising without knowing what your VCI is, your vision, your culture, your image. Again, what is, who are you targeting? What is your vision? So you have to, once you get those three buckets aligned, then the next step is to figure out, now, how do I make sure that my VCI is not misaligned? Um, that I'm not only advertising in a certain area that is not capturing my target market. So if, let's take Dyson as a brand. Now, Dyson is a phenomenal artist. Um, you make fantastic music. And I'm not only saying that because I'm your sister, but because I observe um, what you do and, and it's, it's very creative. So now, this is Dyson's brand. And if, you're, you, if you haven't listened to Dyson, please um, Google him. Um, but this is your brand. Now, what is Dyson vision? Dyson, if Dyson vision is to be one of the, or be the number one uh, soca artist in the Caribbean or in the Western hemisphere, let's take the, we don't want to bottle ourselves to the Caribbean, the Western hemisphere um, as, as a first step, because over the years you can, um, change your vision after you would have captured the Western Hemisphere you move on now Dyson is that's my vision how am I the mission now how am I drilling into uh, achieving my vision I am drilling into achieving my my vision by um, targeting promotion companies or top promotion companies throughout the Western Hemisphere. Um, that's, my, that's my goal. How am I achieving? The mission tells you how you're getting it done. Now, that's your vision side of it. Now, when it comes to my uh, culture, I, may, I, I have to think more of maybe I need that sound guy from who is sitting in Canada uh, versus my sound guy sitting in Guyana, not that Guy Guyanese don't produce great sound men, um, but because strategically I want to target uh, persons who are in his jurisdiction, 
So I'm gonna align my, um, my, my, my C, my culture to the, the right component of the right people within my organization. So, um, and Dyson as a brand is an entire organization. It's, it, it's a big job and I know you do this well and it, it's seamless, but it takes a lot. So think about all the people who you're strategically gonna put in your, uh, in your culture, in, your, in, in that C component, who will help you to achieve your vision. Then you get into um, your eye, the image. Now, if I want my image, Dyson wants his image to be, again, uh, full of energy, um, just, just very, very dynamic. Um, how that's, that's my image, that's what I want people to see me as. Now, good, so I, I did all of that homework. Now, I know who my target market is, it's the Western Hemisphere, and that may be broad, but that's what Dyson is going after. He's done with the Caribbean. The, the, he, the Caribbean is only one part of what he's do, going to do. Now, how do you reach your market in terms of advertisement? And that's where your uh, marketing plan comes in. And it, it, it sounds like a big thing, but it's just one pager. How do you target these people? Um, and Dyson is going to say, okay, so I may, I, 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 I'm running low on resources because of COVID. I have to, I have to cancel several things, etc. But I am going to put together a promo, um, I'm, and I'm gonna align that promo to suit my VCI and all of the components under VCI, all of the touch points we mentioned, uh, so that it, it shows my brand, it shows every, all the components of my brand, it shows my logo, it shows my colors, uh, it shows my all the different touch points. And I'm gonna create that, and I am going to target starting with uh, Canada. And then I am going to go to uh, whatever state, um, and I'm gonna go through every last one by specifically targeting them um, from social media um, where I can, I can set who they should be targeting. So that's, that's the first aspect, one part of, and you get your social media marketing up and running from um, as it relates to your VCI and aligning it. Then uh, you want to also, um, if you're targeting these markets, you want them to see how you are helping out during this time because you want, if your image is to be caring and loving and sharing, then what is Dyson Knight, uh, the entity, doing to help during this time? Um, how am I, and that's, adver uh, that's advertising in itself. So right now, um, and, and that's just from a, you're not just doing it for fake, you're doing it for real, right? And that's where you, you, you build the 100. Um, so right, right. That, that's the area, uh, once you get that, then once we get over this, because right now it's, it's hard to do much, get on a stage, um, uh, we could go on and on and on about different ways to advertise, but this is what you can do now to, to remain relevant. And once we would have, um, the market would have rebound, then you can get into all the other aspects and also get your, um, your, your, your stage presence, etc., and your traditional market. Because even though we think social, we have to think traditional as well. Traditional marketing is not going anywhere. So we have to think about um, billboards in these countries and think about magazines in the countries, uh, ads in newspapers, wherever we're trying to advertise, um, we're trying to target, because that's where um, social media only gets to a certain um, area, uh, and it, especially if we have an older, um, a more mature audience, our target market, we're not gonna necessarily catch them on social media. So that, that would be my advice to you. Oh, that's beautiful. You're welcome. Thank you. That that makes a whole lot of sense, especially that last one. I think that was a PowerPoint. Like, don't don't 
um, ignore traditional forms of, of advertisement yes. and, and getting the word out there. Yes. Also, I mean, when you said, when you mentioned um, um, community service, mm -hmm. in a sense, I know for me, I'm not sure how to make this, how um, larger uh, businesses do it or corporations do it. Right. But every time I do something, uh, some form of community service, I, I almost want to keep that on a hush because it makes me feel like um, I'm only talking about it to get, you know, attention. I, I, or I'm only doing it to get attention, more so. That, that so is, that's you, what society you, tells you, Dyson. Society tells you that um, you should be like the lodge guys and not jump on the roof like the rotary guys and tell, and tell the world what they're doing. Society tells us that, but um, it is okay to share. If you're doing, you're not, you're, 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 you're help, you're genuinely helping out, but share it. There is, there's not absolutely nothing wrong with it, but society teaches us not to, uh, to and, and, and those haters out there who say, you know, I am not going, Dyson is only doing this because of that. Tell them that Felicia says, I'm going to do it and I'm going to jump on the rooftop and I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I'm doing because I expect you to do the same. If each of us would take up that mantle of helping one person, then this world would be a better place. And I ain't trying to be Bob Marley. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you for that strength. <laughs> yes. Um, but I, I see we're way over time. Uh, this was very good. Uh, thank you guys very much. Do we have any... Um, I see the chat is going. Um, did I see that Donovan says most good points, uh, keeping target audience aware um, how your branding is helping others during this time. Exactly. Um, so we just need to make sure that our target market is always aware because if we don't let the target market uh, um, be aware of what we're doing, our VCI is misaligned. And when our VCI is misaligned, we will not be pulling in the revenues when the time is right the way we need to. During this COVID time, we need to use, not the, we need to rest, yes, but according to my husband, sleep for what? We need to get up and we need to make sure that after we would have rested, we plan and we execute with precision so that once we bounce back, we're not out of the gate second. We're out on the, of the gate as soon as they say go. But thank you very much, uh, everybody. You're welcome, Alex Major. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, one thing before I go. Um, we remember that we're doing this weekly until we're out of it. And once we're out, we'll do it every two weeks or monthly. Um, because, you know, that's when everything happens. Um, but what would you like for us to cover? Um, if you can send, uh, send me a message uh, via Zoom or um, via email and let me know what you want us to cover for next week um, as we go about um, sharing, uh, spending time, not being black crabs and helping each other, pushing each other up and supporting each other, making sure that we support each other. Because even if we're in the same thing, I'm sure we can merge, partner at this time, and form big, unstoppable uh, entities rather than hating on each other and, and being jealous and envious. Thank you very much, and have a great night, guys. Take care.